here we're going to create a small email application and I'm going to introduce the Angular concept as we go. As much as possible through the whole first part of the series, uh, we'll be able to just use our browser to create the application, meaning that there's no server side component to it yet. We're just going to mock those aspects in JavaScript. That way, whether you do PHP or ASP or anything like that, uh, it, it won't matter. This part is still going to be applicable to you. In this case, we're going to build an email application, kind of like your standard Gmail uh, and Yahoo. Again, it's going to be a multi-part series. So at the beginning, we're going to get to the main screen. And then in, in sequential videos, we'll get to the other portions. So the first thing we have to do is create our skeleton, our, our boilerplate HTML. So let's do that first. Now, the editor I'm using here is uh, Adobe Brackets. You can use any editor you want. This one's free, and I find it to be quite nice. All right, so we have our boilerplate HTML. What we need to do now is include the libraries that we're going to use. Now, we're going to use two libraries. We're going to use Angular, and we're going to use Bootstrap for our uh, to make our HTML essentially look good. So let's go look for those uh, files. We're going to go look for their CDN files so that we don't even have to download them. So Let's do uh, bootstrap CDN. And because the block series that I use use the older version of bootstrap pre uh, 3.0, we're going to try to get uh, that one. So we're going to go to bootstrap CDN, go to legacy, uh, scroll down till you get to 2.3. And here are the files that we want. Uh, and essentially, it's a combination of uh, two files. We just need the initial CSS and we need the uh, JavaScript. So let's just uh, copy those over. All right. That's our uh, link to the CSS and our link to now let's do our link to the uh, JavaScript. That's one. And that gives us the bootstrap. Now let's go out there and let's get our Angular. Click on download here, it gives us multiple options and we're gonna take the CDN. All right, so one thing we want to change right away is that we want to put uh, HTTP uh, before all the URLs. This is because we're running the file locally. So the forward slashes are great when you're actually uh, have it's running off a web server because it automatically uh, take the HTTP or the HTTPS version depending on how your site is hosted. But because we're running it locally, that won't work. We have to explicitly say that is HTTP. All right, so that should get us uh, everything we need to actually get started with Angular. Uh, so let's see if we could do a quick test, just make sure to see how our heading looks. We can uh, close this now. Uh, I guess that looks fine. Uh, let's do uh, developer tools, see if there is anything that is uh, not functioning here. Uh, okay, actually, so yes, I think there's something right away that is. Uh, it's not giving us any more details than that. Let me refresh. Uh, undefined is not a function. So yes, of course. Uh, so Bootstrap JavaScript requires uh, jQuery. So we are going to need to get that as well. So let's go to jQuery. Let's see if we find anything here related to a CDN. Using jQuery with a CDN. And here we go. We can actually just copy this entire uh, file. This is like an older version of jQuery though. So let's go to jQuery.com. Let's actually click here, go to download. Um, and pick jQuery 2.0. Now we can actually just copy the URL 
do another script tag. Uh, we have to include it before the bootstrap uh, JavaScript. And that should do it. Let's go back, close this, go back to our page, refresh it. And view F12 to view our developer tools. See, there are no errors, so everything should be fine. All right, so great. Now we have our boilerplate uh, in there. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create the HTML that uh, that's going to display our list of emails. So we're going to start with the email uh, screen where we see a list of emails. Uh, it should have our from, our subject, and the date. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to code that in pure uh, HTML. All right. We have our row. We have our column. And we're going to create the first column will be uh, from. Put in some fake data in here. Uh, let's say for from uh, Inan. Dynan TD, uh, it's in Surf Drink. These are some uh, quotes some of you might recognize from uh, Star Trek. And let's do a column for the date. Let's do December 24. Let's uh, copy this to emulate uh, multiple emails. Three is a good number, so let's do one more. All right, pretty sure that last line is not from, uh, from Star Trek. And let's go back here and refresh. There we have our table. Now, uh, as I mentioned before, we wanted to include Bootstrap so that it uh, kind of looks a little bit nicer. I think it's easier uh, to read and understand. So we're going to put our, our classes uh, from uh, Bootstrap. In this case, I'm adding table, uh, table uh, bordered, and table condensed. Uh, and essentially, the first one obviously tells it that it's a table. The second one gives it a border in in and outside uh, lines, and the second one affects the size of it. So this one's a little smaller than the than the regular table. Uh, okay, great. Uh, so this is good. Uh, we have our table. It's a little too big, uh, so we can actually add a uh, a styling here and uh, give it a set width. Uh, well, actually, the first thing we should do is actually put this whole thing in a container div. That's a uh, convention in Bootstrap as well. So uh, the container div is just a regular div with a class of container. So let's refresh that. Uh, that's better. Uh, so it's a little stuck to the top. Again, I, I just think it makes it a little bit more difficult to understand. So let's give it a padding. Uh, of let's say uh, 30 pixels there we go great okay so there we have our item all right so we have a table uh, now essentially what I mentioned before is we're going to introduce angular concepts as we go so what we want to do is is start uh, angularizing uh, this um, and the first thing we can do is actually replace some of these values uh, with expressions and in in Angular, uh, the way you would do an expression is you put a uh, double curly brackets, and essentially anything inside those curly brackets, any code in there gets gets ran, and the output of it gets displayed. Uh, so we're gonna save this. We're gonna go back and we're gonna refresh. Now, immediately you're gonna see we didn't get the outcome that we wanted. We don't want the two angle brackets and the content to actually display in here. We want uh, the code inside to be written. In this case the string to be evaluated and that to be displayed on this page. The thing is that by default, Angular uh, does not just run on the HTML of your page. You have to explicitly tell it uh, what portions of the HTML have Angular in it that, that it needs to run. 
And the way we do that is by putting NJ app. You can place this anywhere, uh, but it's common to place it on the HTML tag. Uh, once you place that, uh, that attribute there, any, any child element of that tag will run any Angular code in it. And so because the body and therefore the div and the table and the TR and the TD are all child elements, this uh, portion that we coded here before should now evaluate and display just the value. You can see that's what happened. So this is, again, I'm just putting a two there to show that it changes, uh, the expression running and getting displayed. Uh, as a plain string, it, it, it isn't something you would really do. But to give you some example, let's say we had a first name and a last name. Uh, we could uh, Jones. We would be able to, to put that expression in there. Uh, again, using a string by itself, it isn't particularly handy, uh, but uh, the real power comes in when you start using it uh, in a real life scenario where you'll be using it with data. Uh, and it's not limited to strings, as I mentioned before, any JavaScript expression will run here. So let's say 60, 30 times two, which will give you 60. You will see that's what gets displayed here as well. Okay, so what we wanna do is wanna show a real life scenario which means that we want to actually bind this to data. Uh, so what we're going to use, we're going to use a Angular directive called nj init to initialize some data, and then we're going to bind to that data. So let's do that. Let's say in the body tag, nj init equals. I'm going to do email equals, and again this is essentially a regular JavaScript from John subject I love angular and date January 1 all right so now we have this uh, variable here email and we can bind to that instead so let's take that first row and let's uh, let's change it so that it's getting its data from that variable instead of it being hard-coded so remember double curly brackets to open to close and email and we're gonna say from just copy that paste it to the next line do the same thing for subject and finally do the same thing for date so now the first row should say from John subject I love angular and the date should be January 1st let's see if that's the case let's refresh this perfect see this is our data John, I love Angular, January 1. John, I love Angular, January 1. Okay, great. So we successfully bound the first row to be actually data-driven. So now we want to do the same thing for all of them, which essentially means we want to create an array instead of a, a single email. So let's make that plural. Let's do an opening bracket and a closing bracket. And let's triple this. Let's add commas at the end of the first two. And let's change some of these values. Let's make that first one Jack. Angular and I are just friends. <clears throat> let's do February 15th. And one more. It's inside joke if you know Ember. Great, so now we have an array. Now, we're not gonna be able to bind to it exactly this way, uh, or actually we can. Actually, we can keep this whole first row. Uh, we can delete the other two. What we wanna do is we wanna repeat that row. Uh, so we wanna use another uh, attribute from Angular, which is ng repeat. And it's essentially a, a for each loop. Uh, and we wanna specify what variable we wanna use, email in emails. So note that our array is called emails plural, and we're essentially say uh, for each uh, email in emails, use the variable email uh, to get that data. Uh, and again, the idea here is that nj repeat is gonna repeat this row, because that's where the attribute is, for each email in emails. So let's save that. Let's go back and refresh. 
There we go. Remember the first one, John, I love Angular, January 1. Uh, and the rest of the array, Jack, Angular and I just friends. And then finally, Ember, I hate you, Angular. So this is great. Uh, we, we're seeing Angular in action here. We're seeing uh, the data binding. Um, and we have this data from, from, from data that's getting displayed, which is one of the, one of the really cool features about Angular. Uh, the only thing is it's all inside our HTML, which is not where we want it, right? We want our logic in our JavaScript uh, and we want our HTML rendering code for, you know, how everything looks to be in our HTML. So right now we have the data embedded in the HTML. We we'll want to take that out. Uh, and to do that, we're going to introduce another concept from Angular, uh, which is controllers. And, uh, and controllers are essentially functions and it binds to, to those functions. So here, we're gonna create a, a script area for ourselves, and we're gonna create a function, and we're gonna call it my controller. All right, and we're gonna give it a variable called scope. That's dollar sign scope. Uh, this is how Angular uh, will communicate between the, the controller, which is this function, and the, uh, the HTML. Uh, so, Anything placed in the scope will be accessible from there. And that's what we want to do. We want to put our emails variable in the scope instead of the HTML. There we go. I just copied it. I'm going to delete the nj init uh, code. And now what I want to do is I want to, ha I, I have to tell uh, the HTML that it should be working together with the controller or essentially, uh, well, yeah, just that, that it's working together with the controller and that should use the scope data uh, at that level. And the way we do that is by using the ng controller attribute and giving it the name of the controller. Aside from that, everything should function, except this time when here, when it says NJ repeat and it references emails, it's actually saying, give me the emails from the scope of the controller. So I'm gonna save that, I'm gonna refresh. Everything looks the same. Just as a sanity check, I'm gonna change uh, the from addresses to confirm that that's coming from the controller. And as you can see, that's what it's doing. So this is great. We have the first green for our email application uh, using Angular. Uh, for the next uh, video, I plan to add the functionality to be able to click on the individual emails and see the content inside those emails. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.